We are here with uh, Rosalind Fuller, uh, that uh, is an expert in democracy and has studied uh, and written many books uh, about how democracy is evolving uh, online. Uh, we we wanted to talk with uh, with you, Rosalind, uh, about what is actually happening around the world and is uh, democracy still uh, a fundamental uh, element of participa participation and uh, how it actually is evolving in these years? Yes, well, um, in the English-speaking world anyway, after Trump, uh, the Trump election and Brexit, we did see quite a lot of backlash in rhetoric against democracy. Uh, but despite that, there's actually been a lot of continuation in the development of online direct democracy. Um, one in particular would be a, a project called Manabals in Latvia, which means my voice and it's a petition system. Um, but if you get enough signatures in this petition, you have to be heard by the parliamentary committee and you're allowed to bring your own witnesses to that. And so far they say they've had 36 changes to law based on that. So that's quite successful. Um, we have, of course, a lot of referendums. Um, places like Switzerland are experimenting also with online referendums. Um, we had a situation in Iceland where a constitution, new constitution after the crisis was developed online and offline that didn't go through the courts, uh, but it was still a quite big successful exercise. And of course, we have a lot of online participatory budgeting as well. So is it uh, just a question of uh, discussing uh, new topics online or presenting new topics online or is it possible to decide things uh, online with votes or with uh, uh, other means? Uh, have you seen any examples of uh, actually uh, changing things uh, with, with an online vote somewhere? Um, I think the best example of that would be participatory budgeting. So, for example, in France and Paris, they do a participatory budget online for the city every year. Um, but they also do that in Reykjavik in Iceland. Um, in Portugal, there was even a national online uh, participatory budgeting project. So those things do result in concrete changes to how money would be spent in communities. So that's like the entire process, often from coming up with the ideas to making the pitch for them, to people voting on them. Usually it's a combination of online and offline because sometimes people don't want to, to vote online, but that is also a possibility. So that's straight through to the decision. Uh, in a number, there's a number of softwares that also allow that. So when I was developing my platform in Ireland, I used a Canadian software called Othello, which also has an entire process from beginning to end to decision making, which is completely transparent. And I use that to develop my platform here. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you're talking about local governments uh, in, uh, in cities, and this seems to be the, the, best, uh, the best place where it actually is coming up, this participation, direct participation of citizens. Uh, are there any examples at government level around uh, the world? I, yeah, I, I don't think local is definitely the best place to, to be. I actually do think these things should be happening nationally. Um, the problem is, of course, that it's very difficult to get them pushed through onto a national level because often representatives want to maintain some control over the process. So what you see a lot is the ideation phase happening online and then governments deciding what parts of that they want to pursue. So kind of being a sort of bottleneck in that process. And that's why I think we've seen more success on the local level where sometimes you can convince a politician that that's what they should be doing and they go ahead and they do that with control of that budget. So I don't think that local is necessarily the best way to institute this because there's a limit to their powers and they're of course controlled and constrained uh, by the national laws, but it is where we're seeing progress. Now, bear in mind, some of those cities are bigger than the population of Ireland. So we're talking cities, but we're talking really, really big cities in some cases. So maybe also in Ireland, uh, you'll be seeing uh, some future development in, in this. What do you think? I, I hope so. We do have participatory budgeting in some areas and we do of course have referendums here. We just don't have them online yet. So often what you're getting is the technology is there, 
but the governmental processes are lagging behind the technology. Um, the one exception to that would be Estonia, where they do have voting. Now that voting is just an election. So it's like taking something you were doing and putting it online without necessarily deepening the participation of, of people. But that being said, they do have, they've had online elections for at least 10 years. Um, and uh, they've actually made government a lot more efficient and utilized technology a lot more to pr uh, power the processes of government a lot more than most other Western states have. So you think maybe Estonia could be a good example for, for the future of, uh, of participation, of voting at least, uh, that for the participation you, you were taking examples like Latvia and uh, uh, other tools that allow people to propose uh, directly. Uh, on, on this, do you, have you seen a good examples of getting a discussion on laws or getting discussion on topics uh, broad uh, among uh, citizens around the world? Yes, well, of course, there's your software or so, but then there's also uh, a software called Discuto, which is actually quite similar to the Lex Scriti function of Rousseau. Uh, and that has been used to develop laws in Austria. For example, laws relating to quite particular industries, like what should count as an environmental label in the tourism industry and things like that. So it's actually been quite specific laws where people are getting down into the detail of what that law should be. So what do you think will be the future of democracy? Today we are seeing a lot of attacks on a concept of democracy, not even on the concept of online democracy or, or other. So there, there is a big discussion on uh, uh, the fact that it's actually an effective way of governing uh, um, a community. What do you think the future will be? Well, I, I think it's actually, in a way, almost a good sign that there are these attacks because it does mean that the technology, the technology is there. We have a, a way to facilitate mass participation in really big states that we never had before. And if you look back at philosophers like Rousseau, or there's also Robert Michels, would say, you know, you cannot have a democracy in a really large state because where would you fit these people? Like, how would they talk to each other all at the same time? And that was a big constraint on having democracy in modern states, which has just fallen away all of a sudden. So I'm not the first person to say this, but the invention of the internet is kind of like the printing press. It's something that has suddenly enabled uh, massive amounts of conversation, ideation, communication, and transparency. So it's not surprising that people who used to hold those positions, journalists, academics, politicians, are very angry at having to adjust to their position in a new world where that position may not be as powerful as it was. It's still important. It's still very, very important to have academics and professors, um, but their control isn't the same. And I think they're very, very angry at losing that control rather than trying to be proactive and think to themselves, how can we use this? How can we channel the, these resources in a way uh, that would be constructive, they've decided to try to clamp down on that. Um, and so we're going to go through a kind of a bumpy period. Well, thank you. Thank you for being today with us uh, and uh, showing us uh, what is actually happening in online democracy. Uh, we'll see how this bumpy period will be uh, in the next few months and years, but I hope we'll, we'll go in the right direction. Thank you very much. Thank you.